Today I'm going to be making the Helltaker apple pie. This recipe was actually requested by one of the Kickstarter backers. Mr. Gallagher asked me to make this recipe for him, and so today I am dedicating this to him. The Helltaker apple pie is actually take on the Polish apple pie, the Zarlatka, and I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. So we're going to be taking both aspects of the Polish apple pie and the Helltaker one to get this started. Into a large bowl, you're going to add 240 grams worth of all-purpose flour, followed by 50 grams worth of sugar, and then separate three whole eggs. We are only going to be using the egg yolks into our dry mix and then using the egg whites later for the meringue, so make sure you hang on to those. Now hit this with a pinch of salt and then give this a good forking. Using a fork to incorporate the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients is going to prevent too much gluten from developing into your dough. Now once your egg yolks are fully incorporated into your flour and your dry mixture, we are also going to add in our cold diced butter. This is a total of 60 grams of cold butter, and remember, it needs to be cold. Yes, I'm emphasizing cold. Please do not put your butter in like this. It's kind of ridiculous and you're getting butter everywhere. Once you've cleaned up your 60 grams worth of ice cold butter and placed it into your bowl with all of your other ingredients, make sure you start breaking down that butter with your fork. If you can't break it down with your fork, start using your fingers, but remember if you do use your hands, your natural heat from your hands can melt that butter. You can also use a food processor for this, but I know a lot of you out there don't have one, so just take your time, try to break this up by hand. You can also use a bench scraper, which is gonna be the best option. And so yes, if you don't have a food processor, a bench scraper is going to be your next best bet. Dump all of your ingredients onto your cutting board and then use a bench scraper to start cutting up all of that. This does take some time, so make sure that you're just using that bench scraper to end up cutting all of that butter into the flour to make it look like sand. Yes, it does take time, Paul. Keep going. Once you've completed your objective and made it look somewhat like sand, take all of your beautiful flour mixture and place it back into your bowl. The last thing we really need to do with this is add a touch of water. We really don't want to go overboard with the water because we don't want this to be super wet. Start off with one to two spoonfuls of ice water incorporating that as well as you can. Remember to use that fork to get all of that incorporated and hydrated. Continue adding in water until you're able to actually bring your dough together. I ended up adding a total of about four to five big tablespoons worth of water to my flour mixture. What you're really looking to do is being able to hold this in your hand and clump it together. Once you're able to clump it together into a solid mass, you know that you have enough liquid in this. Remember, we're not trying to turn it into a cake batter. We want this to be pie dough. After it's nicely hydrated with a few spoonfuls of water, place this onto your cutting board and bring all of that together. Again, don't work with this too long because you don't want to melt that butter too much. The more you work with this, the softer that butter is going to get. Once you're able to get it into this beautiful ball of dough, round it out and roll this into a log. Rolling it into a log is also going to help get this colder faster when we place this into the fridge. Once you have your beautiful log of dough, struggle to get the plastic wrap out of that little container because every plastic wrap on the planet is the hardest thing to deal with. Wrap your dough nice and tightly with that plastic wrap just so no air can hit it in the refrigerator. Place this in the fridge for at least an hour to get nice and cold again, or you can actually do this for the next day. Now, while that dough is chilling in the fridge, we are going to start off with our filling. And for that, we are going to need one whole lemon. Yes, this lemon is going to be very crucial to our filling, mostly because it's going to prevent the apples from browning later. Grab your bowl of lemon juice and fill this up with some ice cold water. Well, just cold water from the tap is totally fine. Once you have your bowl of water ready, we need to peel a bunch of Granny Smith apples. And of course, you're going to juggle these, aren't you? Yep, there's the juggling. Why do you do this every single time? Why is your tongue out? Now, I am using just about six apples. This is going to be a significant amount of apples for this, so if you're making a smaller portion, just size it correctly. Get all of your Granny Smith apples nicely peeled. One ejects itself from your hand, and once you have these all peeled, we do need to cut these into manageable sized pieces because we're not going to slice these like a normal apple pie. As you cut each piece of your apple, make sure you do put it into that lemon water to keep it from browning. These apples are going to be totally fine hanging out in this lemon water for about 20 to 30 minutes while we work on our dough. This dough has been hanging out in the fridge for about that hour mark, and we do need to cut this into two separate pieces. You're going to have one chunk that is about a third of it, which you're going to put back into the fridge, and the other two thirds is going to be the base of your apple pie. I'm using about an eight inch loaf pan that I'm going to spray very generously, so this way we could stick a piece of parchment paper to the inside of it. The parchment paper is absolutely necessary because it will help release the apple pie later. Try to get your parchment paper to stick to the side of those walls, and use additional pan spray if needed to really get that parchment paper to stick to that pan. Cut off any excess parchment paper from the sides, and this pan is ready to go. Spray the inside side of this before we start laying our dough into it. Sprinkle a small amount of flour onto your cutting board and unwrap that nice cold piece of dough and mush it down onto the table. This is somewhat odd to work with because normally for a pie dough you would round this out, but since this does need to go into that loaf pan, we do have to try to make this into a very large rectangle. So work your dough very gently until you're able to get a rectangular shape that's about the size of your pan. Once you have it into this size, sprinkle it with an additional bit of flour if needed to keep it from sticking, and continue to roll out the dough 
dough until it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Once you have the dough nicely rolled out, fold it in half and then gently lay it into your loaf pan. Take your time doing this because I will admit it was a bit difficult to get this into the pan. The reason for that again is because normally with a pie shell, you're able to just roll it out into a round shape and it sits really nicely into a pie pan. Once you have it laid into your pan, cut off any excess dough that you may have, watch as your dough falls off the side and yes, this did happen multiple times. Try to get back into that pan to make sure that it sticks. Now you do need to use a fork to make sure that you dock the dough so this way you prevent any air bubbles from bursting as it bakes. This is a super important step so make sure you do not skip this. Make sure you do dock the bottom and the sides of your dough. Now place this in the freezer for about 20 minutes. I've never made apple pie like this and I'm actually really excited to see how this comes out. Shredding apples for apple pie is definitely something I've never tried before so I'm really excited to see how this is. If you guys have ever shredded apples for apple pie let me know in the comments down below. And if you are shredding your apples make sure that you are very safe and not to cut off any fingers. Shredding apples this way does have a big side effect. We don't want all that liquid. You want a soggy apple pie? I don't want a soggy apple pie, especially a soggy apple pie I've never made before. To prevent soggy apple pie, what you really need to do is take all of those shredded apples and place them into a colander. This is going to release a ton of liquid from those apples, making sure that you press down as much as possible. Look how much liquid came out of that. Look at how much liquid that would have been in our pie. This is still good. You should still save this just in case we need to kind of rehydrate this a little after we add spices, but you don't want all of that. After you've pressed the apples for about three to four minutes, making sure you extract as much liquid as possible, they become nice and flaky, almost airy. Oh, that's good. I turned that into a lollipop. Now that's an idea for the lab. Continue to drink your lab product, I guess. Now we actually don't need a ton of sugar here. I'm only using about 20 grams of sugar for all of our apple pie mixture. You're also going to need two grams worth of nutmeg, two grams worth of cloves, a splash of vanilla, a sprinkle of all-purpose flour, and a pinch of salt. Do I add cinnamon? I don't know. They said add as much as you want, so. They did say add as much cinnamon as you want, but I don't know if you should have added all of that cinnamon, so make sure you give this a taste as you go. Completely combine all of those spices now with your apple to make sure that no pockets of spice are left throughout. Take your time here, but make sure you don't crush those apples. I'm adding only a touch of this liquid. It just feels a little dry. I just want to add the liquid as needed. See, aren't you glad we kept our really good apple water? Pour in just a splash of your apple water initially to get a feel for how your apples well feel. Continue to do this until you get all of those spices blended into the apples. The liquid actually really does help bring all of those spices together, but doing it this way allows you to control how much liquid goes back into your apple pie. I added enough of this to where it's a slight drip out of it and it kind of holds its spot. Like you can see it's kind of held together. Now give this a taste if you're okay with raw flour. Oh baby. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Ready. Now that your apples are ready, we have to finish one more component and that is gonna be the meringue. Grab your egg whites that we had earlier out of the fridge and start breaking this down with a hand mixer. You wanna start breaking down your egg whites until they have this really nice fluffy creamy texture before we add in any sugar. Once you have that texture achieved, we are going to slowly add in 60 grams worth of granulated sugar to our meringue. Do this really slowly to make sure that the sugar fully incorporates into your egg whites. Now one-handedly open your cornstarch and try to take cornstarch out of it. Realize that you can't get cornstarch all over the cutting board proceed to take the cornstarch with one hand, try to dump out cornstarch into that stupid little bowl you picked up, get cornstarch all over your cutting board again because that's what just happened, and then take about five to six grams worth of cornstarch and sprinkle it in lightly into your meringue. This is not only going to help thicken up the meringue, but it's going to help it bake really well so this way it doesn't have a chance of deflating in the oven. Give your bowl a nice scrape just to make sure that no cornstarch or sugar is stuck to the side of that bowl because yes, that does suck. Give it one final whisk just to make sure everything is nicely incorporated. Give yourself a nice pat on the back because yes, you could whip egg whites together. And now your egg white meringue is done and ready to go. Set that aside and let's do this thing. Let us stuff this thing. It's gonna be absolutely glorious. Now this is actually the easiest part of this entire recipe. All we need to do is stuff all of our apple mixture right into that mold. Get it all in there. Don't be shy. Get all of that apple into that mold. Make sure you gently start pressing this down and spread it out as evenly as possible so this way it cooks nice and evenly in the oven. Press it down gently and then we are going to top off your apple pie with all that beautiful meringue we made. Since this meringue was so super light and fluffy, I tried to spread it around as evenly as possible with my big spatula but since that didn't really get the result that I wanted, I ended up using an offset spatula to try to even it out just a bit more. Now with this ready to go, we can pop it in the oven. We are not done yet. Oh, oh, my bad. You're right. You're right. Carry on. From what I understand, you have to take the remainder of the dough and grate it on top. So we're going to, we're going to attempt. Now, honestly, grating this thing wasn't that easy. And I will say if it was frozen, maybe just for a few more hours, it would have been a lot easier. As you can see, I struggled with this. I ended up having to use the largest grating setting that I had on my box grater. And even this was a little 
little bit difficult. Let's do this on the cutting board. Maybe that'll help. Not only does it help, it'll probably stop you from grating your own knuckles. After quite some time, I was able to grate quite a bit of my dough. I ended up grating enough just to be able to cover the top of my apple pie. This was quite the task, but I will say it was worth it. Because we're gonna be baking this for a while, I'm gonna do a little egg wash too. Now the egg wash definitely wasn't in the original recipe, but I really feel like it needs it just because this is going to be baking for quite some time. And if we don't put an egg wash over the top of our dough, you have the chance of burning it before it's fully cooked on the inside. So for your egg wash, all you need is that one scrambled egg, brush the top generously, and then sprinkle it with a hefty amount of granulated sugar. The granulated sugar is also going to protect it, but also give it this really beautiful golden color later. Okay, good luck, little guy. We're gonna bake this at 400 Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. And now we clean up our absolute disaster over here. And 45 minutes later, and whatever happened to his hair, the pie is done. I, I don't know why I grabbed this without a towel, but this is ready to rest. Remember, this is apple pie. You still need to let it rest. Maybe we'll have it for breakfast. I've honestly never had an apple pie that looks like this, so I'm genuinely curious as to how I actually get this out of here. Do I flip it? I feel like we flip it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. Look at that, like a like a lubed glove. Hmm. Look at that crust. Oh, look at that. Look at how golden and beautiful that crust came out. That's beautiful. This is like a loaf though. This is, this is hefty. I'm using a serrated knife to cut this thing open. I think this is gonna be our best bet. We're just gonna go straight down the middle. Oh, it's still so tender though. Okay, let's see what this inside looks like. Oh, baby. What? What? Look at this, dude. That is gorgeous. Let's cut us a slice, yeah. It is a little difficult to cut because it's so tender, but that's okay by me. Can I get this on here? We're gonna lay this down. Hell take your apple pie. Have you ever seen an apple pie like this? We're gonna get a bite with everything. Some of the some of the part on the bottom, some of our meringue stuff on top. This is a this is a thick, thick bite. Cheers. One of the best apple pies I've ever made. The crust is tender, the fluffiness of that meringue, the apples are seasoned beautifully, they're not super mushy like I thought they were gonna be. Absolute 10 out of 10, you should make this. While this thing is resting, make sure you check out my Nakumi Moko Loco Bowl right over here. My name is Chef PK, and remember, keep playing with your food. <laughs>